Hello and welcome back to SHRM Session 4, Part 2. Here we will discuss the different layers and elements of culture. Your learning outcome for this lesson is revolved around the intricacies of culture. By the end of this session, you will be able to learn about levels of culture and understand cultural elements. In part one of this session, we went through various scholarly definitions of culture. To refresh your memory on what culture is, let's look at a simple definition. Culture is made up of the values, beliefs, underlying assumptions, attitudes and behaviours shared by a group of people. Culture is not tangible or visible, but it is always underlying in everything people in a society does and how they do them. Culture is represented by language, decision-making, symbols, stories and legends, and daily practices. There are three broad layers of culture, international, national, and subculture. Let's look at each in detail. International culture is culture that extends beyond national borders, it is not confined to a country, a people, group, or even a continent. One of the best examples is marriage. It depicts international culture because marriage is practiced by people all over the world. Of course, how they marry and celebrate marriage is different. But in almost every culture, you find the concept of marriage being practiced. National culture. This is when it comes down to country level. It is about the beliefs and practices shared by the citizens of the same nation. Like we mentioned before, marriage is part of international culture. However, how it plays out in different countries is a great example of national culture. For instance, very traditional Italians believe that Sunday is the luckiest day to get married. According to old-time Italian traditions, Saturday weddings are reserved for widows. Traditional Chinese wedding dates were often chosen by an astrologer who uses the bride and groom's birthdays to find out the luckiest day they should wed, very much like for Sri Lankans. The next layer of culture is subculture, and this can mean any form of culture of any form of group within a country. It can be districts, town, villages, parishes, schools, universities, or even neighborhoods. And of course, it could also be religions, races, and even organizations. Subculture is the belief and attitudes that separate groups within the same broad culture. Subculture is often made up of differences in religion, socioeconomic status, and race. If we take the same marriage example, Subcultures will be the family traditions in marriage. For example, in Sri Lanka, how a Kandyan wedding will be taken versus how a Western province wedding will be taken. We spoke about the three layers of culture, but with the advent of media as one of the most powerful things to connect the world, we see the emergence of convergence culture. It maps a new territory where old and new media intersect where grassroots and corporate media collide, where the power of the media producer and the power of the consumer interact in very unpredictable ways. The term convergence culture was first coined by Henry Jenkins, one of America's most respected media analysts. Examples of cultural convergence are the use of technology like smartphones, participation in global sports events, and the English language, which is probably the most common when it comes to entertainment. Cultural convergence occurs when multiple cultures become more like one through exposure to traditions, ideals, and languages. For example, Harry Potter fans. And another example are the fans who leaked Game of Thrones spoilers by pooling their knowledge to unearth the show's secrets before they were revealed on the air. As mentioned before, culture is intangible, but there are elements of culture which make us understand it and identify it. These elements include symbols, 
language, values, norms, social organization and beliefs. Let's look at these in detail. Given that most of these words are used interchangeably in conversation, that we sometimes don't fully understand how different they are to each other. Symbols, a very visible form of culture. They are basically anything that is used to stand for something else. People who share a culture often attach a specific meaning to an object, a gesture, a sound or even an image. For example, a cross is significant to Christians. A national flag symbolizes a wedding, a funeral or a special event in Sri Lanka. In an organization, this can mean the logo, the flag or even a particular image or word that means something to the employees. Language, the most obvious yet often overlooked element of culture. Language is technically a system of words and symbols used to communicate with other people. And how one uses language depends on their culture. For instance, Christians may say bless you when someone sneezes, while Muslims will say alhamdulillah. Language differences in culture can be for vocal language elements such as variety of languages. For instance, British and American English where pronunciation and meanings differ. Slang is another clear sign of cultural influence, and so is common phrases. For example, like when the British say, fancy a cuppa, when they actually mean, would you like a cup of tea? Body language is also another indicator of how culture influences people. For instance, eye contact can be considered normal in some cultures and rude in others. Values. Values are culturally defined standards for what is good or desirable. They are shared systems of values in cultures. For instance, in some Western cultures, individualistic lifestyles are preferred over collectivism, while in most Eastern cultures, it is the other way around. Norms. Norms are rules and guidelines which determine the behavior of an individual. Norms are often divided into two types, formal norms, also called laws, standards of behavior considered to be the most important in any society, such as traffic laws, criminal codes, as well as informal norms, also called customs or folkways. These are standards of behavior considered less important, but still influence how we behave. For example, table manners, like how to use your utensils, or how to serve yourself. Beliefs. Beliefs are more in line with religion. They are convictions that people hold to be true. While religion and superstitions are more collective beliefs, people will also have their own individual beliefs stemming from how they behaved in their subcultures.